Welcome back to The Good Talk, the show where we discuss what's hot, what's grot, and everything in between in the wide world of Warhammer. It has been quite a while since we've been here yep. talking about the uh, Warhammers. <laughs> but we're super excited because, of course, this is the pre-order day for the brand new Tau Codex! Uh, first of all, big shout out to Games Workshop for sending us advanced copies of the brand new Crute Hunting Pack box. Comes with, of course, a bunch of Crute, and most importantly, the brand new book. This, I have to say, the feel of this codex is really nice. Right? Like, whatever material they used, A+, plus for sure. This is and it looks favorite. really good, too. And the back is just all crude. Mm, it's so nice. It looks so nice. Right? You got the nice foiling on it. Mm -hmm. This is, yeah, I think this is my favorite codex that they released in 10th edition. Yeah. Like, as far as physical product goes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. So thank you everyone so much for joining us. Uh, we, of course, earlier today played our first new Tau game on stream. It was a ton of fun. It was. Um, played against the Yanari with a with a, like a kind of meta take on a lot of jumpy, move, shoot, move, uh, mixed, mixed attachment. Mm -hmm. It was a ton of fun. We won't spoil it, but definitely check that out. We have a lot more coming up along this week, as well as a full breakdown on which detachment is best for you. Um, so I highly recommend you check that out. Um, if you're new here, welcome, Tabletop Titans. We highly encourage you to subscribe and check out everything we've got. So today, Brian, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the book mm -hmm. in a good amount of detail. Yep. Um, if there's something that you want to discuss more, let us know. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to send in super chats. There's no minimum or anything. You can just feel free to ask. This is a time to just create a conversation between you and us and discuss all things Tau and all things Warhammer. Yeah. And there kind of is a lot to unpack here. Because uh, yes. right now there's a lot of... Uh, I don't want to say hate. Hate's not the right word. Yeah, but people. The, the Tau players and the community just as a whole are very down on the crisis currently. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. has been a staple for Tau for many years. <laughs> I know. Uh, the crisis suits. <laughs> right. So, definitely a lot to unpack. A lot of our thoughts individually. Because uh, yeah. I don't know if we share the same thoughts, but. I'm sure we probably share some of the same thoughts. At yeah, I, I, I think so. And I'm, I'm definitely curious to hear, hear what you think on, the, on them. So. Let's, we're going to start uh, diving, diving on in. Mm -hmm. um, so high level stuff, right, before we, we take a look close up at the, at the book. Um, there are four detachments in here. Um, so of course that it's less than Space Marines. Um, it is Montca, Carrion, so the two main fighting styles of the Tau. Mm -hmm. uh, the Retaliation Cadre, which is kind of a, that was kind of unexpected, right? Yeah. Um, and then of course the... The Crute, which is I think the most unexpected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're all cool, they're all different. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. We've got Doc Mel producing. She was dancing around the wires, plugging in an extra light right now. I was so very nervous that. while she was doing it. It was nervous. Oh, everyone should have been nervous about that. <laughs> yeah. That was not, that was definitely Mel's nemesis right there. <laughs> I was dancing through. I'm so impressed, though. That turned out great. <laughs> um, yeah, so four detachments. Let's just dive on in. Yeah, was it? We can get some, some close ups here on this beautiful book, Mel. Take yes, a look at what we, we have. Can. All right. Here we have it. It's beautiful. We're not going to go page by page, but um, I know, good. right? I'm sure there's other people that have done that. Uh, we're going to skip right ahead to the rules. They put Combat Patrol before, before the rules. Before the rules, yeah. That's really funny. I feel They're like, like they do that all that. the time. It's so weird. It's the classic Crusade section. Yep. Um, all right. So digging into it, this is just general rule book stuff if you haven't seen it before. Um, greater Good, uh, this is almost unchanged. It's, it's a very, very similar. This is their spotting mechanic, and they have a nice little chart that explains it. Um, and then, of course, they do confirm that if you are an observer, uh, here's the way it works. Um, you go, you want to shoot with a unit. You declare um, a different unit to be the spotter. So in this diagram, for example, they're saying, OK, the um, stealth suits are going to be the spotter unit for the, uh, what are these, breachers? Fire warriors. Strikes, yeah. Fire, fire warriors. warriors. Um, and they're going to be guiding them onto this target, okay? Um, when they do that, so this unit has to be eligible to shoot and has to have not shot, shot yet. This is now going to grant um, this observer unit, uh, ignore cover. <laughs> I'm like making sure I'm getting this right. Sorry, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give them sustained... <laughs> it's going to give them plus one ballistic skill. <laughs> and if, they, if this unit has mark lights, it's also going to give ignore cover. Ignore cover, yeah. Right. Um, in addition, if this unit is now shooting a different squad, they're getting minus one ballistic skill. Yeah. So they kept this ability. I think it's dumb. Whatever. Um, the change is, though, um, it's very slight, it's very minor, um, is that you actually 
just the, the wording in which they do it. So they actually talk about the guided unit gets plus one BS um, against against this target. It's a little bit different. Before it was like the verbiage has kind of moved around. It's very, very similar. Um, and they do clarify that if this is a, 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 a spotter, mm -hmm. They are spotted for the rest of the uh, of the of the turn. Um, and I don't I don't think they can become like you can't do, you can't like cycle it and have them like benefit from someone else spotting from them before they shoot. So very very similar though. Um, it's cool functionally the same. Um, oh, <laughs> we're fine, we're fine. yeah. Oh, okay okay cool <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Anyways, uh, drones almost identical. Um, the only change is the uh, missile drones are back down to AP1. They were AP2, which made no sense because missile pods were AP2. So that's a change there. Um, the only the thing I'll mention with drones is there's a lot of different loadout stuff that, that changed. Many units are limited, so you can only take like one, one shield drone. drone. Yep. Exactly. Or one of each type. Yep. Um, and you see that through a lot of the warrior gear. So whatever, that's fine. Um, this is the beginning, of course, of the crisis uh, hate because they now are effectively five wounds because you can only take one shield drone. Uh, so yeah, greater good, drones, uh, and then go straight into the detachments. Uh, so this is the detachment that we had before um, that people are familiar with, Kalyan, Patient Hunter. Now, it was worth going over because it actually has changed relatively significantly. They've moved some stuff around, they've removed some abilities, adjusted others. Uh, let's take a look. So, Kalyan is all about battle rounds three through five. It's, it's kind of dirtling the first two turns, trying to not lose the game, and then, and then coming in hard. Yeah. Famously, this is really hard to do in 10th edition, right? The game is yeah. really set in motion by turn three. Um, but if you can last that long, from turn three onwards, you're going to get sustained one with your ranged attacks, so exploding extra extra hits on sixes to hit. And if they uh, are target, if they're targeting their spotted unit, they get sustained two. Um, so it's great, it's cool, it's powerful, and again, slightly different wording than it was originally, um, but very very similar. It's a great ability. Yeah, I think. I would be more into this ability. Uh, like, it's obviously very strong, and it can swing games, like, mm -hmm. really hard in yeah. one direction. Um, but again, you don't get your army benefit for the first two turns. I know, it's brutal. And so playing a game of Warhammer without an army rule yeah. can be very, very difficult, especially mm -hmm. when it's something like sustained hits across the entire army, where you're just mm -hmm. not benefiting from it yeah. uh, for the first couple of turns. And especially if you're having to go first or something, yep. you're not going to get it turn one anyways, I guess. So that's not the worst thing, because yeah. uh, you probably won't have much to shoot at. Um, it's a good point, But though. if your opponent knows that you mm. want to play turn 3, 4, 5, yep. then they're probably just going to go hyper-aggressive yep. to make it so that when you do get your benefit, mm. it's not going to matter as much because ideally for them, you'll have much less things to actually use it. Yep. Um, so I'm, that's why I'm not a huge fan of this. Uh, funny enough, it would actually kind of fit my play style because I like to play the last <laughs> few turns of the game. I know, anyways. you would think, right? But I don't like not having the rule. Mm -hmm. the, every time that I want it or need yep. it, I don't like to not have it. Exactly. And... Yeah, it's that's really the crux of this, and this is a theme that you see, unfortunately, throughout this detachment, where even some of the strats are limited to turns three onwards. Mm -hmm. It's like take this concept, kind of risky, and then they they kind of continue it through. So it is a bit of an issue there. Mm -hmm. um, and and as far as like going first or second, that also is highly highly influences the way that this plays. Unfortunately for the Tau players, yeah. right? You never want to have to rely on that. Um, Melodies in chat saying solid image is uh, very good. Yes, it is. It's, an, it's super strong. So yeah, let's take a look at the enhancements. We can we can jump to solid image projector. Um, so this is a new addition. It's so a redeploy, right? It's a redeploy. Yeah. It's after both people have deployed. It's it's before you who, before you know who's going first. So it's not the strongest of the redeploys, but it's still very very important, right? Especially with these like specific loadouts on things like crisis and stuff like that. You can see where your opponent's set up and then redeploy based off yeah. of that, right? Especially with things like Infiltrate or Scout or whatever, mm -hmm. you get to see all of where they're going to go, where they're trying to protect, yep. and then you can be like, all right, I'm going to now move mm -hmm. from your strong side into the weak flank or whatever. Yep. Uh, I both like and dislike that it's before you know who's going first. Yeah. Because if it's after you know who's going first, mm -hmm. I feel like there's too much information that you've gained. Yes. It gives you way too much of an advantage, especially because there's not a lot of redeploys in the game currently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in ninth edition, there was much more. Uh, but right now, currently, there's not really any. Yeah, exactly. So having the knowledge of, like, I know that you're going to go first, so now I get to redeploy super safe. Right. Or I know I'm going to go first, so now I can be hyper-aggressive and try to stage for whatever the alpha strike that I'm trying mm -hmm. to go for. Uh, granted, it's in the Kalyan, so it's not... You're probably not going to go for the alpha strike here. True, true, um, yeah, yeah. So maybe that wouldn't matter her, uh, that much here. But I do like the idea that it's a risk versus reward type deal. Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm 
kind of into how it is currently. But yeah, I think it'd be too strong if it was the other way. Mm -hmm. um, but and the infiltrate is a great point, right? Because you can you can move block, you can infiltrate block aggressively, mm -hmm. knowing you can pull them back from safety, yeah. right? So you just kind of you use that to, to maximum advantage. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I think it's cool. I think it's strong. I like so they pulled out the Puretide Engram Neurochip, which is such a cool concept. Um, and as we were discussing it earlier, I thought I was going to have a lot more potential in the detachment it got moved to, but it, I think it still remains one that, that we're not going to see. So they pulled that out of this, which is fantastic. Um, we can also take a look at the rest of the enhancements. We have Exemplar of Kayon, same as before. Um, this is a, a Tau Empire model that's not the not a Crute Shaper, and it's going to give you Kayon from turn two onwards. Yeah. Huge. I will say, again, we're going to talk about Crisis Suits a lot. Crisis Suits locked to squads of three now, so less impactful because it's a smaller squad, they have less guns, but still very, very strong. I think you're going to try to take this almost every single time. Yeah, especially with like the three inch deep strike being able to turn two, here I am, I get to do the thing so on the, the unit. So they won't have the three oh, inch. Oh, that's the I know. retaliation. But that's the, that's, yeah, that's the balance of it. That's the balance of it. Uh, precision of the patient hunter on a, a commander, let's be real, gives them plus one to hit, um, and then <laughs> uh, later on, third battle round on, plus one to wound. Again, kind of a bummer that this doesn't just take effect immediately. Imagine, imagine other detachments. It's like, hey, here's your your thing. You only get to use it for three turns out of yeah. five. You're like, what? Okay. Um, but still strong. You probably still take it. So good, good, good. And lastly, through Unity dev uh, Devastation, um, this is unchanged. Um, and I think it's it's lethal. Nah, I'm not crazy about it. So basically, uh, while the bear is leading a unit, each time that unit is an observer, basically grants the unit that they're guiding for lethal hits. It's cute. I wouldn't write home about it. Yeah, it seems like one of the weaker ones, like the obviously weakest one, here, yeah. I feel like. Um, because at least with the plus one to hit, even though the plus one to wound is more restrictive, you at least mm -hmm. always have the plus one to hit, which is yeah. nice. Uh, and then obviously redeploy is probably the strongest one here, I yeah. think. Is, is Exactly. But Totally agree. This one is, is, is fine, I guess. It's okay. It's like if you have some extra points. Um, yeah, exactly. It's one of those things like, oh, I have 20 extra points I don't know what to do with, yeah. so I'll take this thing. And that seems kind of... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which, you know, speaking of points, I just want to mention, um, at the back, we have the points, they are made up, and <laughs> these are these are probably not going to be the real points, right? So I think there's going to be a lot of questions about what costs what, just like the Deathwing. The what? through Unity Devastation point cost. How much is it? 25. 25! Yeah, you're never taking that. I know, it was like if it's 10 or 15 maybe, you're never going to take it. Never, ever. Keep in mind folks, this will change once the book officially comes out outside of the uh, crew hunting pack. So yep. it's just an annoying GW thing we got to deal with. Yep. Anyway, strats. Um, great strats. So we've got a <laughs> target. This one's actually a pretty interesting design. It's, yeah, I'm just going to lay this flat for now. One CP. Um, in your shooting phase, you pick a Tau unit, and you pick one objective marker. You pick that objective marker the first time you use a strat. And every time you use a strat after that, it's on the same, same objective, objective marker. marker. And you get plus one to wound. Is it against any... Uh, just enemy unit within range. Yeah, plus yeah. one to wound for a CP. I... That's really strong. It's amazing. Especially because there's a uh, mission where there's only one objective left at the end of the game. Yeah. Stuff like, or like the exactly. ones where you uh, have to make objectives or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. And you have a lot of like those like kind of those choke holes that develop over the course of a game. Yeah. So I think it's great. There is of course a restriction. It doesn't work turn one and two, which is a real bummer. That sucks. I I'm not a fan of that. It's it's dumb. Point blank ambush remains the same. One CP for uh, plus one AP within nine. Uh, amazing. Can't use the turns one and two. <laughs> That's still good. Uh, coordinated trap. This this kind of grants you the effects of being guided if you're an observer. You're not tech, you're not officially being guided, but it's the same idea. Plus one BS, if there's a marker light, then you get to ignore cover. It's cool, situational, strong. Combat embarkation, again, same as far as I know. Um, this is the ability to hop back into transport when your enemy uh, goes to charge you. Um, it's cool, I think breachers are great. Mm -hmm. um, they're really, so Exemplar of Kalyon, we talked about it in Blix, uh, Bricks of Six Crisis, but it's actually also kind of cute in, uh, on a, a a uh, fire blade in a unit of breachers. So they're getting 30 shots coming out of their uh, devilfish. Mm -hmm. We're running full wounds um, uh, if their target's on an objective. Um, and then and then popping back in if someone gets close. And yeah. this is from turn two onwards because of this. So like this is actually kind of cute. Because yeah. you need something to play the game early on to get people off objectives. You also don't need to be wholly within three to get back in. It just says within three of the transport. Oh, so not that that's going to nice. be like a super big deal, but every model has to be within three, but not yeah. wholly within. So no, that's, that's not awesome. going to like 
come up super often, but that is oh, kind of like cool it. that it doesn't have to be wholly lived in three. Yeah, that's always important, right? Uh, photon grenades remains the same. This is uh, subtracting uh, uh, charge, rolls. charge rolls and stuff for CP. Great, you'll definitely use it. And last of all, this is a new stratagem that's been added back in. Um, I love this stratagem. I've always loved this kind of thing. This is, uh, of course, Uppy Downy. <laughs> uh, for one CP, and it's uh, effectively a stealth unit, right? So stealth, Ghost Kill, or Commander Shadow Sun can go back into reserves. Can't be in engagement range, but this is great. This is a welcome addition, and this is going to help play the Kalyan game. It's going to let you yep. score secondaries. It's going to make, it's going to really punish your opponent if they're too aggressive. Yeah, and it lets you just exist until you can get all of your guns to bear to right. turn three on. Uh, so I think, I mean, it's definitely, it's obviously a very powerful ability. Mm -hmm. Any unit that has that ability is getting played currently. Yep. And obviously there's a reason for that, right? It's just very, very powerful to have the flexibility of being anywhere on the table at mm -hmm. any point in time. Exactly. Uh, so definitely that's going to be like a staple for this detachment. Right. You're going to use it every turn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's, that's Kion. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's still a totally viable, strong mm -hmm. detachment. It's really going to punish people. If, if you're a kind of KG or player um, and you want to, Slap them super hard in the later in the later turns. I think it's fine. Um, and again, this is also a detachment that doesn't care as much about crisis suits. Um, it's a lot of like, like again, breachers are fantastic for this kind of thing, mm -hmm. and they're not getting affected by all the crisis, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's cool. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the stratagems being restricted. I think if you're going to have an army rule that's already restricted, yeah. the stratagem shouldn't also be restricted. It's too much. It's too much. I agree. Right. Next up, we've got Monka. This is the one I was waiting for. Uh, this is, of course, the aggressive play style. Um, their detachment rule, I think, is it's kind of disappointing. <laughs> this is Killing Blow. And this is in the first, second, and third battle rounds. Okay. Um, you get lethal hits. Uh, what is it? Just period, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just lethal hits. And then if you're being guided, you also gain assault. <sighs> so, <laughs> lethal hits is kind of whatever. Like, it's cool, but... In 10th edition, sustained, lethal, sustained nine times the 10 is just going to be better. It's just yeah. more shots, more potential. Lethal is higher. very situational, right? It's like, oh, yeah. I'm going into thing that's higher toughness than me, then I'll... I mean, even then, I would probably still would take sustain yeah. because you have more chances to wound. Exactly. But I don't know. And I frankly wish you just got assault all the time on everything. It'd make yeah, it much easier just to use for actions and stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, underwhelming. Yeah, it seems very underwhelming. And the, the whole having to be guided for getting assault kind of sucks. I'm not... Right? It's like, let them be flexible. Why not? Yeah. It does get better from here on out, though, so let's take a look. So, enhancement-wise, we've got Exemplar of Mont Ka. So, as you guessed it, this is the kind of reverso of the other one. Uh, and this allows your Mont Ka to apply for the Bears unit um, longer, so into yeah. the fourth battle round, uh, which is cute. It's fine. Strike Swiftly. This one I really like. This uh, lets you give Scout six inches to two nearby units, uh, two units near, near the Bear. This is... Awesome. That is really nice. And it's just two units. There's no restriction. It's not infantry. Mm -hmm. It's just two units get scout, and that's all there is to it. I love this. This is going to let you be, again, aggressive in the first turns. Yeah, because you need to be for this detachment, right? You really do. And you need movement, because people can be so hidden in the early turns, the 10th yeah. edition, if they want to be, right? Yeah, for sure. So this is this is fantastic. Uh, strategic coordinator. This is, what, plus one OC? For... Uh, yeah, well, then we're going to... An objective. Oh, you pick an objective and then everyone gets plus one OC on it. It's fine. If I had points to take it, I would. Yeah, um, I think I would... I don't, I don't mind this, actually, because a lot of times yeah. there's things that, like Troop, for example, mm. they don't have the extra OC, right? So having just five guys being yeah. able to contest Troop, for example, like a 10-man squad of Troop, yeah. contesting it or even taking it off after killing one or something, mm -hmm. I, I don't think this mm -hmm. is, like, the worst thing ever. No. Uh, and OC... I mean, it's super important. So I'm actually more into this than I think I probably should be. <laughs> uh -huh. I like it. Well, but a... the fact that it's only on one particular objective is kind of Yeah, rough. exactly. I'm curious. I know this, we, we can't trust these points too much, but basically our, our kind of mentality is if something new, these points feel like they're going to be relatively reliable. If it's mm -hmm. something old that exists, like the Riptides here are still 245 points. Yeah. And I feel like that's not going to be the case. That's not going to be the case yeah. at all. Um, Monka. Uh, strategic Conqueror. 15. I'd That's not bad. 15. Yeah, 15 points. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't mind having that for 15 points. Last of all, coordinated, ex coordinated exploitation. Um, so this is kind of the equivalent of the other one. I actually like this one better. It's if you are guiding a unit, you're going to grant that unit sustained. sustained. So you're kind of getting that ability that we've become kind of become a, uh, accustomed to. So mm -hmm. uh, you can't put it on a recruit shaper. Um, wait, can you put that on other recruit characters? 
uh, just as exclusive, unless they all have the Crute Shaper keyword, but I, oh, oh, they all do have the Crute they, Shaper they're keyword. They're probably Because it's like the Flesh Shaper and um, yeah. whatever Shaper and everything else. So you could put this on like a Fire Blade um, when they're guiding someone else or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually like this one. I think this is cute. So enhancements. Um, yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag. I'm not, yeah. nothing like really stands out to me as overly powerful except mm -hmm. for like the Strike Swift, uh, Strike Swiftly giving the scout, because exactly. uh, it just gives you more flexibility to try to get your turn one uh, mm -hmm. killing blow off. It's so because, important. Because, like Adrian was saying earlier, turn one, it's so hard to even find shots anywhere. Yep. So you're already losing a turn on your ability, mm -hmm. which really, really sucks. Unless you're going second, and then right. there's more options for it. Yeah. But Well, and that's the nice thing about scout, is... You can be aggressive or defensive. Exactly. Yeah. Unless you do both. If you can be on the line and then hide if you go second. Right. Uh, moving right along, we've got the stratagems. Uh, so this first one is Pinpoint Counter Offensive. This is a, a revenge strat, basically. And I actually like it a lot. So it's one CP uh, when one of your Tau Empire units, not Crute, because they don't care about Crute dying, dies. Um, <laughs> you get reroll hit rolls against that unit for the rest of the game. It's really powerful. It's very good. Especially, it's kind of, this is meta dependent, but mm -hmm. right now we have lots of armies that have big bricks of things. Yeah. Not Tau anymore, but Custodes, um, things like that, that have these big bricks of things. Or even just like a vehicle. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, like Iron Storm, Space Marines exist everywhere. Oh my god, yeah. And they always have tanks, they have Gladiator, yep. uh, Gladiator Reapers, and all those types of things. So. Scat Thatch, yep. you know. Um, so you throw out your Piranhas, mm -hmm. so it doesn't work for crew, which are good trading units, but Piranhas are also amazing trade units early on. Be like, you want to kill this guy? You sure about that? You sure about I'm going to reroll hits against <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, for the entire game. Yeah. All so the time. I'm actually into this strat. Yeah, I like this a lot. And, and it's only one CP, so it doesn't feel bad using it either. And you can use it in any round. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, aggressive mobility, one CP in the movement phase. Uh, this is auto advance six. I love this. This is my favorite strat, hands down. <laughs> this is this the is most my, Eldar strat. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> my favorite one, hands down. Any anytime you see this, it's always amazing. Yeah. Anytime you don't Fantastic. have to roll a dice in a game, all about rolling dice, mm -hmm. it's usually really good. Yup. This is your your crisis with uh, a cold star, mm -hmm. auto advancing eighteen again. This is getting on objectives. Yeah. Again, you're going to get assaults, which is cute. Mm -hmm. So you can do actions. Um, this is cool. Yeah, this is it. great. I love this. Focused fire. Um, I like this one as well. This is basically well, it's focused fire. Two units have to shoot the same target. You get plus one AP. Um, you can't be battle shocked, and, and you, you can't, can't use it during four and five right. rounds. Four and five. So that's a bummer. Overall, I like it though. I like that it's one CP. We've seen some of these strats sometimes cost two. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good. Yeah, yeah I, I like it. it. It's fine. Combat uh, debarkation in your shooting phase. What is this one? Oh, so this one, ah, this one's weird because it looks good, but you got to think about the context. So this is an, uh, a turn in which you get out of a transport, mm -hmm. full rerolls to wound for one CP against the closest. Oh, is it really? Yeah, against it the closest. Worse. Yeah. So my issue is like, who are you doing this on? Breachers already get full rerolls to wound against a target on an objective, so it's like strikes. Yeah, but that are all, they're kind of a longer range unit, like. But then the. The closest, the, having to shoot at the closest thing to get it is kind of what's yeah. killing you, right? It's an amazing strat, but it doesn't do much yeah. in this, unless, you know, maybe I'm missing something from chat, so, yeah. yeah so it's just re-roll, oh, it's in the shooting phase, okay, so never mind. It's, I was going to say, because it's just re-roll wounds, but it doesn't apply in the uh, fight yeah. phase. Yeah, it's just kind of, it's awkward. It looks yeah. so good, but then, yeah, let us know, folks. Uh, next up, Pulse Onslaught, it's expensive. It's 2 CP, but this is... Uh, this is your Night Spinner strat, right? Yeah. Uh, minus two to move, minus two to advance, minus two to charge. This is an ability that you will use in those matchups where you really it need it. It is so strong. Like, you're not going <laughs> to use it every turn because it's two mm. CP. Yeah. And you're, you want to spend it on other things, right? But mm. when you need it, yep. it's going to matter so, so much. Again, Custodes matchups. Yeah. So important these days. And I mean, as long as you're not shooting Trajan, because obviously you wouldn't, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't get Brian started on that. <laughs> or, or Orcs, for example. Or Orcs, yeah. Anything that really wants to get in your face, like World Eaters, yeah. even. Uh, like, any type of mm. army that wants to get in your face and apply a lot of pressure, this yeah. is going to help you in that matchup so, so much. I like it because those are the matchups that Tau struggle the most on, mm -hmm. you know? And it's, we talked about this during the game in terms of Eldar, but it applies as well for Tau. Like, if someone just front lines against you and just runs into you... Yeah. It's tough. It is very um, tough, yeah. So this is nice because it kind of helps shore up a weakness rather than lean into something they're already good at. Yeah. Especially because there's not a lot of combat. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can't fight the combat armies, right? Like, it's yeah. never going to happen. So you have nope. to rely on your mobility, which is why you have the aggressive mobility. You have things like, I'm going to slow you down so I can get away so I can still shoot my guns in all the phases, mm -hmm. or in all the turns, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I love it. I mean, 
there's a reason night spinners are still taken, even yeah. though they got the points increases. Right. Like they're just so strong it's because of that ability. reason. Yeah, amazing. Uh, last stratagem. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. It's two CP, so expensive, but minus one damage and shooting. Very That's very important. Uh, I don't think it's two CP. Yes. But you know, it is what it is. It's a, it's it's pricey. It is very pricey. So, but this is against your your two damage armies if you yeah. go up against like custodes and orcs. Yep. There you go. So this detachment, what do you think? I'm curious. Um, it's a mixed bag for me. So I think yeah. the army rule, the detachment rule. Again, it's kind of I'm on the same opinion as the uh, counting on, mm. just because you don't get it the entire game, right? Mm -hmm. There is the one thing where one unit can have it for an extra turn, but like you still lose it turn five. Yeah. Right. And a lot of the times you can win games in the final turn, especially because going second is so strong mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the time when you score yeah. at the end of the game. It's a tough uh, time to lose all your tricks. Exactly, right? And then <laughs> even the stratagems that you can't do on turn four and five, like uh, the focus fire. That's exactly when you need it. Yeah, exactly. Turn yeah. four and five is when you need it, but then you can't. So I'm, um, again, I don't like the restriction of the detachment rule and then also stratagems. I don't think it should be one or the other, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think you should be penalized because your detachment wants you to play either one through three or three through five. Yeah. You shouldn't be punished for that even more than you already are. Um, the enhancements, I'm kind of okay on. The Strike Swiftly, obviously, is very strong. And then the Pulse Onslaught is, I mean, it's hands down. It's, really it's like so one. good. It's so good. And it says a lot because it is expensive, but you yeah. still really, really like it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just a powerful ability. Even if the Night Spinner did nothing else mm -hmm. and still only did that, I would still take it. At the same points. Yeah. yeah. At the same points. 100%. <laughs> uh, so that's Monka. Uh, actually, this is a good time. How is Chad doing? Let's check in. Sorry, Mel. <laughs> Chat is doing great. Um, there are a couple super chats we could jump into if you want, but mainly just feelings about the books. Yeah. Uh, I think kind of the same back and forth. Some are great, some are not. Yeah. Um, I agreed with a comment by Lugbers that as a non Tau player, at first glance, the army now seems a lot more fun to play against. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, if, to me, as someone who doesn't play Tau, has never been interested in Tau, like, they seem more interesting to me now. Mm -hmm. um, and then Pesler had a great idea that so we should do a Mon Ka versus Kayan game. Oh, that would right? be cool. We have enough Tau models to make we that do. happen. We do. Yeah. In enough colors so games. Yeah, in enough yeah. colors games. That would actually be really sick. That we should definitely fun. do that. Yeah. Um, who, would I, you, who do you think would have the advantage? Moncarvis, Kalyan. Oh. I personally think Kalyan would have the advantage. I think Kalyan, because they're both maneuverable, mm -hmm. and Kalyan can kind of dictate the pacing of the game. Yeah, I think so. That'd be my fear, yeah. And the lethal is only so good, but the sustain is... Sustain is so, so good. good. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. Um, what was I going to say? I can't remember. Yeah, we could take some questions now. If, yeah, if, if, let's uh, do that. Before we move on to the second two the detachments. The second half. Second half. The better half. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I'm, I'm agree. First one comes from our uh -oh. very own married man, oh, Shane. Marcus, congrats, Shane. Nothing. I just love the Titans, and I'm glad they came to my day. Also, to keep it relevant, I hate Tau players. So, as a Marine player, how do I beat them? Walk wow. In their face. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shane. Uh, well, we kind of just said it, actually. Yeah. You be very, very aggressive. Um, you run at them as fast as you can and punish them. Make them stand out in the open. Because unlike Eldar, they will mostly be there. Once they they're there, you. they're there. You know, yeah. if they move out to shoot you, they kind of just stay there. Yeah. It's tough for, like, Marines... So Shane's been playing Vanguard, mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting against Tau, because Tau, I think, struggle, generally speaking, they might struggle more against, like, Ironstorm, a bunch of high, high toughness. The Vanguard, they'll, start, they'll struggle because of the minuses to hit, mm -hmm. but, like, toughness and armor-wise, that's actually pretty fine. But I think, yeah, just, just pressure. It's pressure. all pressure. Pressure. So, yeah. Hey, don't play the hate. Don't hate the players. Hate the game. I'm all. I'm not a huge fan of Tau just as an army. They're so cool. Now they're so they're, cool. they're better now, but the aesthetic yeah. never really did it for me. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree. I think this book is much more fun to play against, yeah. and because it also it's a much more aggressive movement based army. It's not like wait until turn three five shoot your opponent to death and just table them. It's like maneuvering, and we'll see the next attachment really doubles down on that. So, yeah. it's a much. I've been waiting for this change like let's make this about fast awesome anime mechs like come on that's what it's supposed to be tau has always fallen into the trap of you either table your opponent before they even have an opportunity to do anything yeah or you just don't have a game because your opponent is just so aggressive and they have melee right like yeah. world leaders or <laughs> anything you know like it was right. just so oppressive for tau that yeah. they couldn't wait until they wanted their count on mm -hmm. where they their uh Mont just wasn't 
really beneficial to them because mm -hmm. they couldn't maneuver, right? Yeah. Uh, so they always just relied on tabling their opponents, which always mm -hmm. felt bad for both players. Like playing Tau, having to table somebody is like, ah, if I don't table you, I lose. And then right. on the other side of it, it's like, well, I got table turn one. I don't know what to do about that. Exactly. Like you deep shark on me turn one because you could, in, you know, previous editions or whatever. And then like I got tabled by Izzy in a, oh, a yeah. single turn. He went first. I lost 90% of my army. Oh turns. my god. Because he just deep struck turn on. He got first turn, deep struck turn one, and killed everything with his battle sweep. Jesus. And of course, I was playing Eldar, so I yeah. died to everything. Classic. But, uh, you know. Don't miss that. But it stuff. always feels bad for both players when that happens. Yeah. So, this definitely seems like it, and even with just the game that we just played, it's definitely better. Totally. You know, like my, my protein bar. Yeah. Thanks, Jane. Thanks so much, Shane. Thank you, Adolin Solaris. Hey, Titans. Just finished my first Tau Crusade game. My Solar Commander ran circles around Vulcan and Buds. What are the Crusader rules like in the Codex? Ooh. Ooh. I haven't even looked at the Crusader Great question. rules. Crusades before, right? Uh, they put it at the end. Now. That's combat control. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we can take a quick look at the Crusade. Crusade, 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 Crusade. Do, do. Um, Throw it up on the glam cam when yeah. you're ready. I think it's similar. Oh, here yeah, we we're ready. It's similar to the old crusade. Um, it's about expanding the empire. <laughs> as Crazy, turns out. Page says. <laughs> and um, let's see. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's about controlling different different types of worlds: mining world, civilian world, military base, agro worlds. Determine the temperament of the system's inhabitants. Shrine world, civil. Oh, these are cool. Determine the planet type. Well, that's. Oh, high value planets. That's awesome. Okay, okay. And as you take them, you gain different abilities. Oh, and they have a temperament. Oh, that's crazy. This is actually really cool. This is actually really cool, yeah. yeah. Assimilation abilities. Oh, God. Sellouts. <laughs> Belief in the cause. Oh, man. This is actually really cool. I read Political Center, Traders Hub, Research World. There's a lot of stuff in here. Right? And you have to take over planets, too. That doesn't seem very diplomatic. Just taking over. I mean, this, this, this town. Oh, this diplomatic is... takeover, military takeover. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Show of force, totemic infusions. It's really cool. I like it. There's a lot to unpack here, actually. Crusade is a lot of pages. It's. I'm. As we're, we're. This edition is coming out so slowly, but once we have enough armies with Crusade, I definitely want to try some Crusade stuff. It's just. You want everyone to have their book before you do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. Oh, the Onager Gauntlet. Yeah. And the Begel. Oh, the Begel Hunter's Plate. There's like 13 pages of Crusade rules. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, it's packed. Oh, here's your like charts for your planets. Anyways, it looks very cool. Yeah. So, again, all about assimilating peoples and cultures. <laughs> Dang imperialism. <laughs> uh, thanks, Adolin. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Adolin. Thank you, Lars White. Reducing crisis suits dependence is appreciated. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that so much. It was too much, and it did, it's like you're saying, they didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad. I think smaller squads are better, they're more fun. It's better for the game, right? And we all need to remember that. But that's like, this is for the overall health of the game. Yeah. Even if you're someone that loves to do the big six-man six crisis blocks, it's a power trip, but this is going to be better all for, better for the overall health of the game. So Anytime you're forced to take, and I say forced, Obviously, you could do whatever you want. Yeah, but there's like when, an optimal. Yeah, when the most optimal thing is like you're, you're always forced into like the optimal thing if you want to play competitively, right? Sure. Yeah. So when that thing is the thing that everybody takes, which is the six crisis suits, and you just have like three squads of six, it's just like mm -hmm. it sucks. It sucks, you know, because yeah. then you go in, as a, somebody playing against Tau, you go into like, well, I'm playing against Tau. Here comes eighteen crisis suits. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm playing Tau. I got eighteen crisis suits. It's like not my list. That I, there's no like. Yeah. Um, diversity. Uh, personality diversity, mm -hmm. right? You can't really express yourself when it's just like. Here's the thing that I'm always going to take every single time because yeah. it's the most efficient thing. Yeah, there's a much there's much more skill expression mm -hmm. now. So, thanks, Lars. Appreciate it. Shall we dive back in? We have one more oh, for this okay. batch, oh, okay. and then I think we did dive back in. Individual eleven, thank you so much. If there are no changes, how do you okay. see forward units playing in this codex, specifically Arv Arvons? Uh, Yvarnas. Yvarnas. Yes, towered. It's hard. To, it's, it's, it doesn't have the good mouth feel. No. <laughs> Hazards, remoras, and tiger sharks. Great question. I mean, a lot of the forge roll stuff is kind of a bummer. Um, the tetras are great. Um, they're slightly less mandatory now, as I mentioned, because the stealth suits. Uh, we'll get to they, that. Yeah, yeah. They give her rolls hits as well as wounds now. Um, the hazards and the remoras were very disappointing for me. Um, Good question. Where's my phone? My are Remoras still flyers? They I think they are, but they lost their like marker light role. 
which was one of the cool, they also used to have a kind of like a super marker light. So I, I used to actually like running a, a Remora instead of Tetras, because um, it was super, super fast, well, right? Remoras, yeah, they were incredibly fast, and they mm -hmm. had, they weren't restricted to the whole like pivot and then move kind of thing, they could just move right. right. Yeah, but yeah. if they're still in the flyer battlefield role, mm -hmm. and they don't have hover, which I don't know I, that they I do. don't think they have, no, I don't think they're flyers anymore. No. Sorry, where is, no, do you know where my phone is? Here. Because uh, that's where I all the forgeable know. units are. Yeah, um, we can take a look. Um, the Overvarna and the Yavarna. Where do I see them in coming to play? I think, well, for sure, in the next attachment, Retaliation Kadra, we'll talk about them because I think they really benefit um, from that extra AP, extra strength, getting up close. Oh, just kidding, Mel, it's here. Oh, dang. Thank you. Aha! Uh -huh. Beat me to it. Right? So I think they definitely want to run in that detachment. It's actually something that could be interesting. Like, the only thing I like about that detachment, which we'll get to in a moment, is it ch changes the characteristics of models and lets you rethink things that maybe wouldn't have been interesting or viable before. Um, Tiger Sharks, um, is that, that's the bomber? Uh, Tiger Sharks are the bomber. The regular one. I think so. I'm picturing a model no. in my head, but I don't know if it's right. No, it's the Forge World. Oh, yeah, yeah, these are the, the uh, world, these are the anti-Titanic devastating wounds ones. Um, is this big? Is this a big? It's big, big 18, oh, 18 yeah, wounds. Yeah. And get this, so the guns are really funny. It's uh, it's twelve damage, devastating twin linked anti uh, vehicle, anti Titanic. It's strength twenty six. Yeah, <laughs> but it's on th one shot. But on threes, you're just doing twelve damage. Period. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say strength 26? It's 26. strength yeah. one. That is the highest one strength shot. I've seen in the game. What's a volcano again? Uh, less than that. That's I think insane. it's like 24 or something. That's wild. <laughs> so I think they don't have an amazing place in the game for a lot of reasons. It's one shot, it's expensive, they're flyers. So I think GW still has kind of a hard line there where they're kind of phasing those, those units out. Yeah. It, it really doesn't feel like they, they support them. Um, but I wanted to see the Remora, because the Remora, everyone wants to see Remoras. So they, oh yeah, and you wanted to see like, keywords. You have vehicle, flyer, marker light, Remora, stealth drones. But they're not flyer. They're not flyer, they're not like aircraft anymore, which is good. Um, and then they have the- Infiltrate. Oh, I didn't know that. Infiltrate, stealth. That's wild. And then if you move within nine, they can move six inches. Um, okay, okay. It's not the super marker light. So it's hard to be like, why would you take that over like a Tetra or even a stealth suit? But I think it's cool. Yeah. And the hazards, the hazards need work. I think if you take it, you're not going to feel bad for taking it. You know what I mean? It's, I, yeah. Unless, I don't know what the points were, but... Uh, I forget what the points are, but... But with Infiltrate and Stealth, it doesn't feel... Like, you're getting something at least, right? Yeah. Um, so I don't know that you necessarily want them, but I don't necessarily think that they would be the worst thing. And I think that's where a lot of the Forge World stuff should be. Yeah. Frankly. So, thanks, Individual 11. With that, let's dive on in. We alluded a lot to Ooh, retaliation. Retaliation cadre. This is, I think, the detachment. Um, let's take a look. So, this detachment is all about battle suits, which is really why many of us started playing Town in the first place. So, the detachment rule is bonded heroes. Awesome, first of all. Uh, and what this does is it gives you plus one strength to range attacks when you're shooting within 12 inches. Uh, kind of situational, but it's about like taking particular weapons and loadouts that benefit from it, right? So burst cannons going up to strength six is really cool. Flamers going from four to five is really cool. Um, fusions, actually, now that I think about it, going up to strength 10 is important. Oh, yeah. Right? For popping um, a lot of those, a lot of vehicles in your hand sports. Yeah. The second thing, part is more interesting to me. If you're within six, so danger close, plus one AP. And that is a spicy meat the bowl. That extra AP is really, really nice. Huge. And again, it's, changing profiles. Right? Yeah. So, so good, so interesting. You gotta be aggressive. This is not yeah. your hang back and shoot everyone from a distance, yeah. which I think we can all agree on is a good thing. Enhancements, we've got pure Titan and Gram Neurotrip. We talked about this earlier. This allows you to repeat a stratagem. Um, unfortunately, this only works on battle tactics uh, due to the FAQ. If it wasn't limited to that, then we can talk. Yeah. But unfortunately, I think you kind of give it a pass. You shouldn't ever do CP rerolls, even though we I, we did it multiple times in this game, and you should definitely never do it twice. Remember when Autarchs let you used to let you do this? I <laughs> don't think I ever use that ability. <laughs> they, they specifically, I have a um, brief brief story about Jesse playing Eldar, mm -hmm. and like someone's like watching Jesse play, and he's like does a CP reroll, and then he goes to do another CP reroll, and the person's like, "What? You can do that?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm Eldar." 
And he like doesn't ex doesn't say like the actual reason why. Doesn't explain any of it. And the person's like watching. He's like, what the heck? And then watched another game, and Jesse did the same thing. He's like, oh my god, is Jesse just like, like bullying people into <laughs> just like cheating. just like blatantly cheating? And he's like, oh no, it's on the Autark. You never, you know, no one yeah, ever thinks about it. Yeah. Because it was only you can use the CPU reroll two Twice times in a yeah. phase instead of once. Like yeah. what? <laughs> Anyways, um, back to the enhancements. So, probably give this a pass, right? Yeah, I don't like it. This is amazing. Star Flare Ignition System. This is uppy downy. So, let your battle suit uh, unit go back into reserve within your opponent's turn. Massive, massive ability. So, so it's a powerful ability. So strong. Yeah. Uh, also, powerful internal grenade packs, a uh, racks. This one gives the bearer the grenades keyword, so pop, doing mortal wounds. And then additionally, all this extra text is basically grenades again if you fly over an enemy unit. Yeah. So this combination is extremely powerful, and we even learned some more tricks during stream. Yeah, we did. We'll talk about that. Love it. These are amazing. This is amazing. Um, and this one actually is, I'm, I'm, I'm into it. This is uh, for a single, uh, it's just for the bear. Mm -hmm. You can choose to give them lethal or sustained hits when they go to shoot. Most of the time it's going to be sustained. Um, but this is great for a commander, you know, mm -hmm. take a bunch of shots, whatever, um, I'm into it. JW calls the Starfire Ignition Systems, we ball. <laughs> yeah, we ball. <laughs> <laughs> Let's ride. It's that, that scene from Bug's Life when the grasshoppers. Oh, uh, yes. Let's so, ride. And they fly out to look at the holes in the ceiling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, so, you know. Yeah, I know. So. Brian knows. <laughs> I love, oh my gosh, I used to binge that movie. I watched it like five <laughs> times in a row. Oh my I God. I love that movie. That was one of your movies? Yeah. Yeah, we watched it again recently. It, was, it holds up. I my favorite scene in the movie is actually yeah. not even from the movie. It's like the, the, the intro. No, the intro when the old man is playing chess against. Oh the yeah, we talked about this. I <laughs> love that. Those were so good. They were. Oh, I missed. Anyways, them. so enhancements. Yep. Looking pretty gosh darn good so really, far. There's only one that I'm not a fan of, but uh, we're on the same page. It's the pure tight end grenade. Yeah. Ship. It's like whatever. And you can uh, only take three anyways. But right. the other three are strong. They're very strong. Very good. So strong attachment. Mm -hmm. Strong enhancements. Strats. Follow suit. Let's take a look. DJN was wondering, does Pure Tide would would work on the three inch deep strike? Uh, uh, no, this, so let's so that's right here. Shortened blade, unfortunately, is a strategic, it's a strategic ploy. Ploy, Yeah, it's not a yeah. battle tactic. These are these are the two that I would want to do it on. Um, well, we'll talk about the one battle tactic. So it feels very very niche, unfortunately. Uh, so and again, keep in mind this book was probably written before all of those changes happened. Right, we can tell even by the points. This is the time period in which Riftides cost 245 points. They're almost 100 points cheaper now. Um, two CP, fail safe detonator. I'm sad I didn't get to do this against Brian. Um, this is automatically explode, a battle suit unit. Or if you don't have the explode, actually the funny thing is you, it's actually, it's a fail safe. So you can choose to definitely not explode or you can choose to definitely explode. You can choose a one or a six. Um, and if you don't have deadly demise, uh, you do mortal wounds on, on, on a 4+. Four. I understand why this is 2 CP, because you would just do it every single turn, so yeah. that's and probably it fine. also gives you the option of not exploding, too. Yeah. Like, I don't know, 2 CP for that? I mean, I don't think it's... It's not... It's tough, right? Because it's definitely should be more than 1 CP, but it definitely shouldn't be 2, right? Yes. It's, it's like a weird... Like one yeah. and a half CP? Is, can we do halves? Yeah, halvesies? Go halvesies on this? I know. Uh, question still about the battle tactic. So is the battle tactic thing re relevant here? Uh, Will thought it was only free strat related. Um, so question on like why star, fl star flare ignition system doesn't work. Oh. oh. Well, let's confirm that. Honestly, I would love. So my, and if you watch the, uh, the pre-recorded video we did, I do talk about using it. But then... I'm pretty sure I th I thought I was wrong. Do, can we get a so fact check on that? Now that I'm reading this, I think you actually could because it just says you can target the bear's unit with a strat, even if you've already used it. It well, doesn't say that it reduces the cost of the stratagem. Right, and so the wording of the FAQ is only it, I think changing it's like, cost. It's I not like I think so things because that... you have like the captain that makes it free. Yeah, you have like the calories that increases it, yeah. or all the type of stuff. They're modifying oh. the cost of the stratagem. Does it make me so happy if this Sorry, is true? And I meant to say pure tide, not the starfire. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, good, we're good, good. We're good. If this is true, I'm happy. I for think it. that's probably what they're referring to. I don't know the answer to it, um, but I imagine that's yeah. probably along the the thinking. So here. we need to find that FAQ chat to, to confirm this. I mean, if Willow's saying it, it's probably true. Um, in which case, you would drop this and you'd take this. For sure. 100%. 100%. And we'll get to the strat. We'll get to that strat in a moment. Um, 
for those of you who aren't familiar. So the question is, because there are two different entries in the FAQ about mm. limiting you to battle tactics. One for, um, unfortunately, why do they put this little heart em emote thing right over the chat? So you're like, can't read. One for the cost and one for the repeating stratagems. For repeating stratagems. Which one's the repeating strat? Yeah, that's the one that would be relevant here. Yeah. So like, I know, I thought it applied to repeating stratagems because you can't repeat Overwatch, right? I thought. I think that's just like an Overwatch thing. It can only ever happen once, oh, no matter what. Oh, because it says it, and you need a strat that affects only Overwatch. So right. it's a different override that you need. I think so. So Sleeping Pill says, the balanced data slate stratagems that can be used more than once per phase slash turn. Uh-huh. And what does it say? That's, 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 that's all, all they give me. Mm. Willow says they are cleaning their brush, and uh, she's going to go look for us. <laughs> well, I think we're on the right track there. Thanks, I think Willa. we're on the, the path of you can do it. Seems like that's worth leaning. Yeah. Um, balanced data slate. That's a much easier file to parse while doing this stream. So I can pull that up. If it's there rather than FAQ, stratagems that can be used more than once per phase. Rules that allow you to stratagem even if another unit has been targeted by stratagem this phase or turn, but do not specify the name of stratagems, can only be used to battle tactic stratagems. Okay, so then we're back to you. So can't we do it. so we were correct. correct. You cannot yeah. do it. Okay, 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 okay. So yeah, so it. Oh, you give me hope, chat. Okay, so close. So close. Can only be used on battle tactics, yeah, which yeah. unfortunately the the strat that we're talking about, or the two strategies we're talking about, are both not. Right. They're uh, strategic ploys. And yeah, and this includes that Overwatch thing because it specifically says it. It calls it out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, there we go, folks. So close. Um, next up, we've got stim injectors. I was yelled at many times in chat uh, for using this. One <laughs> CP give a unit a, a battle suit unit six up feeling pain. It looks like it's a it's a sixteen percent increase in durability. It seems like it should work well. <laughs> uh, until you watch what happened, you know? It's true. And to be fair, it's an opportunity to cost, right? Yeah. These are, there's other amazing strats that you might be using instead, such as the shortened blade. Two CP in your movement phase allows you to deep strike beyond three inches rather than nine, but no charge. Such oh. strong oh. ability. Oh my goodness. It is amazing. It's so hard to screen out three inches. Right? It's almost impossible to screen out three inches and stay yeah, safe. There's no like, way. Like, if you're trying to, you could do it. But then you're definitely exposing a lot of things, mm -hmm. and you're going to lose things. Yeah. Or you're regardless. you're pinned in a corner. Mm -hmm. Suddenly the tile player is the aggressive one. Right. The whole world's upside down. Yep. It's wild. This is fantastic, and yep. it really synergizes well with the bonded heroes because getting within six is very very difficult, right? So this is fantastic. Uh, next up, we got the Ericon protocol. This is very situational. It's one CP. It's it's like a pseudo blast. So in your shooting phase, you pick one of your battle suit units, and if you're shooting at a unit that has six or more models, you get sustained. If they have 11 or more models, you get sustained two. So it's meant to just like gun down a big block. Um, right now, as a time of recording, we don't see a ton of these in the game. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty situational. You're probably not going to see it much. The game is always changing though. So in the future, maybe six months from now, this is like the strat you're always using because everyone's running giant squads. But it's fine. I like the concept. The yeah. idea is there. It's just, again, there's nobody takes massive squads anymore. Yeah. Uh, and even if you do take big squads, a lot of the time they split. <laughs> Like yeah. Cavalites, they have to be 10-man squads, but then you split them. Exactly. And then they're 5-man squads, right? So, it's cute, but... Uh, this is, of course, uh, an amazing strat. The Torch Star Gambit, 1 CP. Uh, in your shooting phase, uh, after one of your battle suit units that can fly, uh, they immediately move. So this is this is kind of strike and fade that, that got moved over. Um, so you can move, make a normal move, you cannot sh charge, and you can't do it if you're in combat. Amazing. Um, especially, again, you want to get close up. Tau are not that durable. Mm -hmm. um, but this is going to let you stay a bit safer. So again, if you put a cold start in a unit of crisis, they're moving 12, they have assault, so they could advance up, get within short range, shoot, and then still move 12 away. They can't advance, yeah. but it's still pretty gosh darn good. I mean, 12 inches is... <laughs> yup. That's, that's like... <laughs> that's no man's land, like half a no man's land, right? Yeah. You could just jump back from deployment to... Or back exactly. to deployment. Yeah, over. and you could, you could jump over one of your screens or yeah. something, so I like that. Or your opponent's screens, or you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, I don't know why you would do that, but you could get, like, if you have engage or something you behind the lines, you can get even further in. Absolutely. And then last of all, Grav Inhibitor Field. It is a niche stratagem, but I actually like it. This is uh, in your opponent's charge phase. For one CP, if one of your battle suits gets, a unit, get, units get charged, you roll a dice for e each model in that unit. Every six is a mortal wound. There's no cap on number of dice or number of mortals, mm -hmm. which is fair, because you're not rolling that many dice. Again, it's a kind of another anti-horde one, um, but I think this one is just more broadly applicable um, and is great against, um, well, troops. Would have been really good today against your Harley Quinn. Um, they also take a Battleshock. I don't know if you said that. Oh, and a Battleshock. No, yeah. I didn't say that. 
So, you know. So it's nice to be able to, like, if you wanted just to try to force them off an objective or something, mm -hmm. you could go in and spend the strat. It's one CP to force a battle shock, essentially. Yeah. Um, which could super, like matter because Crisis are what two OC? Yeah, yeah. And then so they I mean, can take the objective. Yeah, and then they could just steal objectives like that. That's actually probably the, like, the most applicable the most applicable. strat. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So that is the Retaliation Cadre. I think really interesting, like mm -hmm. amazing detachment rule, amazing enhancements, and then about half the strats are amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then we have some more niche ones. Really fun, really flexible, really aggressive. Yep. Really of the three this. that we've looked at so far, I think this is by far my favorite one. Yeah. Uh, at least from like a player's perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like the most fun to play, the most well-rounded, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the other two where it's like, I'm doing one thing yeah. on this part of the game, and then the other one, I'm doing this thing on this part of the game. This is, you do the thing all the time whenever you want to, yeah. uh, and you just have much more flexibility here. Absolutely. And that, of course, takes us to the crew hunting pack. Ooh, the well, crew hunting pack. Look. It's exciting. Uh, okay, we'll go through it and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Lots of thoughts. So, Hunter's Instincts, uh, the detachment rule. They actually have three detachment rules, kind of four. Um, so, they have. Scoot it sorry. over a bit. Thank you. Boop. So, we've got Hunter's Instincts. Uh, Croup models get plus one to hit if the target unit is below starting strength, um, which is good, it's fine. And then plus one to wound if they're below half strength. So, this is, as you were saying earlier, the Sisters of Battle rule. Mm -hmm. The first half is, you can control that. Yep. Just get some some kills on them. Uh, the second half, much, much tougher to get. Um, it's probably never going to come up, to be honest. It's so, yeah, you just can't count on it. You, no. You're going to forget about it, too. So if this was it, I'd be very sad. This deta this ability, however, is what makes this detachment tick. Uh, Skirmish Fighters gives your crew models a 6 plus invulnerable save against melee and a 5 plus invulnerable save against ranged attacks. That is so... Powerful. Is very, very, oh, very so powerful. strong. A five up in army wide to shooting. Right? In an arm or in a game where it's shooting dominates. It's so it's important. So important. And these are, you know, these are like people just wearing like t shirts. T shirts. Long spots. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes less, you know? Yeah. So it's super important to have this. And again, if you play with or against orcs, you know, the it makes a that difference. Invul save is in so powerful. Exactly. And, and of course, they did it in the, in the proper ratio. It's better against range than it is in melee. I like that. So. I think if it wasn't for this, this would be pretty unplayable. Or even if the two were flipped, right? <laughs> oh, like yeah. A six up into shooting and a five up into melee, then yeah. it would, what, who cares? Exactly. But so because they flipped amazing. it the way that they did, or they, they wrote it the way that they did, mm. it makes it actually interesting. And then a uh, uh, bottom one, uh, just crew, or crew carnivores are battle line, so you can take six of them. Makes sense. <laughs> also, because everything's very cheap, I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. This uh, crew hunting pack box that we're holding here is about 500 points. Of course, this is before we know what they'll actually be. But sure, sure. This is probably yeah. similar to what they actually will be, because you have a lot of the new models in this exactly. box. Exactly. Um, but, yeah. subject to change. Gosh, I think crew actually might have gotten cheaper since 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 Riptides were 245 points. So it might even be less. Oh, I'm sure they have. Yeah. Although they did get a new ability, which we'll talk about later. Uh, enhancements. They're all pretty cool, actually. So, Kroot Hawk Flock, um, <laughs> this gives the bear's uh, unit, uh, the range attack is going to ignore cover. It's fine, it's okay. Um, the more powerful thing is you actually prevent reinforcements com from coming in within 12. Huge. That so, all these three inch deep strikers? Can't do it. No. So, you're going to take this every game. Yep. Nomadic Hunters um, is only for the Trail Shaper, gives their unit plus three move and assault. I like this. It's great for primary, secondary, yep. getting stuck in, which is good. Uh, root carved weapons. This one, so when you first look at this, this is, as Brian would say, buns. It is buns. It gives one person precision and devastating wounds. Okay, what the, what crew character is going to make this worth it? Um, let's just talk about it now. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just go through it. Let's, the let's wombo it. combo? Wombo combo. Because it's so, it's like mandatory. So you can only put this on the war shaper, uh, which is one of the new uh, crew shapers. Crew shaper, separate keywords. Um, and you take this on the dart bow and tri blade, uh, because this you look at it, and it also seems underwhelming by itself. Also buns. Yeah, exactly. Range twenty four, D three plus one shots, D S four, oof, uh, strength four, AP zero, two damage. Wow. It does have assault, does have heavy, and it does have anti infantry. So by itself, it's kind of poopy. Um, but of course, you combine it with this. Suddenly, it's a sniper with devastating wounds. So every three up to wound because of anti infantry is going to do two devastating wounds. 
That is that a spicy is actually meatball. scary. Right? There's no AP, but you're, it doesn't matter. No, you're just getting devastating because wounds. Because it's just devastating wounds. Exactly. And it's only strength four, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because it's anti-infantry and devastating wounds. So the Spicing. stats don't matter except for the damage. Right. Uh, and the ballistic skill, obviously, is kind of the only downside mm. here. Yeah. But it isn't unplayable. Exactly. Which, if you look at the ability of the root carved weapons just by itself, also unplayable. You, like, it doesn't matter to anything. Yep. But then you put it on the character, and it actually becomes something, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm into it. I like the combo. That I'm, I'm just into it. I think it's cool. I... I'm just excited that we there's a reason to actually take the bow yeah. model. Like, and also, you don't even need to shoot characters with it. You could shoot like, yeah, Space Marines just any something infantry. and just kill like, Space Marine models. It's, great. You know? it's yeah. great. And they do other things which will be relevant as well. Um, the last one, Borthrod Gland. This one's kind of weird. I'm, I'm conflicted. Uh, it gives It's on the Flesh Shaper, and it gives their unit 5 plus uh, crits on 5s. Now, what, is the, what does the Flesh Shaper do, you ask? Well, let me tell you. It gives the their unit sustained hits. So now you're getting sustained hits on, on fives. fives. Cool. Um, that's good. Most of these units aren't amazing in melee, but no. we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. So let's take a look at the strats. Join the hunt. Two CP. Um, right after one of your infantry or crew infantry or crew hounds units were destroyed, put another identical unit in reserve. Oh my gosh. Uh, crew carnivores. Go up to squads of 20. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? <laughs> Guard? Guard, GSC. Like it's yep. a, I mean, it's a very strong ability just to get a free unit back mm -hmm. on the table anywhere you want it. Well, anywhere, but it's strategic reserve, reserve, but really yeah. anywhere you want it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's strong. It's I mean, cool. you're not going to use it every game probably, but you'll use it often, oh, I, think. I think. you might use it every game. You think seems, so? It seems important. I think I'm at least taking one unit of 20 just what, for the strat. For the CP though, right? Because like, it's two CP, so it's it not. A lot. And it's a battle tactic, so it's definitely getting vected. <laughs> but it has, yeah, and it has to be when they're just destroyed. Correct, yeah. So, like, if you don't have the CP when they're just destroyed, it's not going to happen. Yeah, that's true. So you can't go back, even though you can use it in any phase, you can't go back and be like, oh, the one you killed yeah. in the shooting phase. Yeah, guard players are always like, okay, like, yeah. you can always kind of make them make that tough decision mm -hmm. when you're playing against guard players. Same thing with, with crew in the future of, like, do you want to keep those TCP for that, or do you want to yeah. minus one damage or whatever, yeah. you know? So, I, I like it, but I think it's balanced. This next one, I think you're going to use... You want to honestly want to use this one twice a turn in the shooting <laughs> yeah. and the fight phase. A trap well laid, one CP, uh, gives a crew unit plus one AP as long as they're not battle shocked. This is in shooting or fighting. Super important. We're mm -hmm. talking about that, that war shaper giving uh, sustained on fives. Crew carnivores, for some reason, have just basically less combat weapons. Yeah, the only issue I have with it yeah. is it, it takes two units to execute this thing. Mm -hmm. so the first unit has to resolve all of its attacks, then the oh, second unit true. gets the thing. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So you're not going to use it in melee as often as I would like to. Because they're going to get interrupted. Right. Yep. Um, but in shooting, it can mm -hmm. really shore up mm -hmm. some stuff. Because you have the character that could just snipe something, right? The sniper character we talked about. And, he could be the one that does his thing first. Yep. And then now the second unit that's shooting yep. can use the stratagem. I'll uh, I'll do you one better. Oh yeah. If you look at the lone spear. Oh, the lone spear. The lone spear. This is the crew How could I forget about the lone spear? Uh, <laughs> I I was really concerned about this unit, mm -hmm. um, but I I'm like the way they designed it. Unfortunately, I don't like the javelin. I think you're gonna take the crew long gun. So range 36, sniper three damage. Okay, fine, whatever. Yep. Um, it's a lone operative, so can't be shot beyond 12. Mm -hmm. Scouts stealth cool. It's got literally fire and fade. They actually called it fire and fade. Called fire and fade. You know how upset I am about this? <laughs> it's literally called fire and fade. It's a I, <laughs> I am so angry. They have actual fire and fade. <laughs> what? Nothing is unique anymore. There's nothing. Oh my God. Look, if everyone's super, nobody is, right? Oh my, I hate it. I hate it so much. But here, the most important is this, this one right here, advanced scouting. Each time this model makes a range attack that hits an enemy unit, until the end of the turn, each time another crew model from your army makes an attack that targets that enemy unit, you reroll the hit roll. That is so strong. It's a super marker light, but with shooting. Yep. So this guy hits, you spend the CP, gives another unit, plus one AP. And they have so things like crew oxes and stuff that are... Would that be an good. argument then for taking the javelin? Just to try to guarantee that you get the reroll hits off? Because the, the long gun is only one shot. That and is true. It hits on a three, so you're probably going to hit, but like... On the turn where you absolutely yeah. need to hit. And it's blast. Yeah. D6 shots. I mean, it's thrust only 18 inch, shot. It's but. only 18 inch range, <laughs> which is kind of the downside here because you yeah. have to be kind of close. And he is a lone op. Yeah, yeah. And if you're within 18, somebody mm -hmm. can move six. True. And then shoot you now. Although you can fire and fade. 
<laughs> oh, I hate it so much. But I think that's a good point. That is a reason to take the javelin as well. So, I don't know. Let's know in the chat what you think. I'm so, I'm so upset. <laughs> Moving along. Oh my god. Uh, EMP grenades. I don't like this one. This is one CP uh, in just... your opponent's shooting or fight phase. Yeah. Uh, against a vehicle, they basically toss these things and it gives them, what, minus one to hit? Minus one ballistic skill or weapon skill. It's just like, you gotta be close. You have to be within eight inches. And your opponent gets to choose. Yeah. So, this is not, this is Buns, Buns category. Uh, next up, Grizzly Feast. This one is... I kind of put this also in the Buns category. Buns category, what is this? Is one CP in the fight phase? Oh, uh, it's Battle Shock. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, because everyone's horrified that they, like, ate someone. Yeah. And don't love it. Situational. So, for this one, it's uh, your crew have to kill something, okay. and then in your opponent's command phase, everybody within six, I believe, has to, yeah, within six has to take a battle shock, and if they're below half, it's at a minus one. Right. But that doesn't stack with normal battle shock. Oh, this is the only say... battle shock that they take for the entire turn. Yeah. So if they were below half, they would already have to battle shock. Yeah. You're just not making it at a minus one. So it's this. You're never. It's so use weird. This. I don't think you'll ever. This ever should just use be this. an extra rule on carnivores or something. Yeah. You know? it's so weird. Uh, the next two strats, however, are great. Yeah. Gorilla Warriors, one CP. It's funny because the, the crew docs kind of look like gorillas. Um, <laughs> the animal, not the freedom fighters. Uh, so it's one CP, fall back, and shoot and charge. Yeah. Always Amazing. a welcome sight. Amazing. Which, of course, lets you fall back and do actions. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one, a big way that this detachment plays the game is by dominating secondaries yep. and denying primary. I yeah. don't think it's actually meant to just kill everything. No, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah. When you look at the profiles and stuff, the crew... They can't. No, there's yeah. no way. But it can do all this other stuff, and this helps with that. Yep. And last of all, Hidden Hunters, one CP. Um, this gives you one of your crew units low and off, basically. So it can't be shopping beyond 12. Again, we're talking about things like that sniper, um, the the root-carved weapon sniper, or just a, a, a... Just a squad of dudes. Anything. Yeah. Fantastic. So if you're staying on objective and your opponent gets tempting target and the only way they can get there is by shooting you off of it or whatever. Right? Well, Lone well, Op can't shoot me. It's cool. It's, a, so, it's very strong. It's the, the Lone Op, I think, is probably my favorite mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Um, the Gorilla Warriors is a close second. Fallback, you're never tied down, right? Yeah. You can always do something all the time, which yeah. I find... You, mm -hmm. I mean, you have to be able to do that, right? Yeah. Especially with something like this where you don't have the killing power. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to, like, move and play the game. Yep. Uh, and Grill Warriors is a close second for me. With the Hidden Hunters, if you don't get shot at at all, then you don't need to fall back and shoot. Yeah, Exa or, or if you exactly. don't get shot at, I mean, um, you don't need to use that stuff. And I think there's something cool that can happen with, like, pressure crew. Even with, like, a couple blocks of these 20. Can we talk first, though? Yeah. Every crew unit. Yeah. Has scout. Yeah. Seven. Every single one has hey, scout. Except. Except for the one character <laughs> that has infiltrator. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the kill team. They infiltrate. Oh, it's not a character, it's a kill team? It's the kill team, which is amazing, actually. We just ordered a second box. Um, and they have infiltrators. They have infiltrate and stealth. Yeah. Yeah, the whole army scouts, scouts seven, seven inches up. That's absurd. I think the pressure is really, really, it's really yeah. cool. It's real. Um, I think since we're talking about crew, we can talk about these these. Uh, data sheet since we're here. Mm -hmm. Because you really can't evaluate this detachment without knowing without the units. Knowing the stats, yeah, and it's exactly. a bunch of new units. So let's talk about it real quick. I want to talk about, since we're talking about pressure, I want to talk about this flush shaper. So this is the one that sustained hits one, can go to sustained on fives, right? Mm -hmm. If we have that. This rights of feasting. If it gives the unit a six up feeling pain, if they kill something in melee, it goes to a five up feeling pain. Yeah. So imagine 20 crew carnivores. Scouting up, and everyone's got cheap trading units early on, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking relatively tough units, um, but with a few kind of screening trading units. This punishes people for having that. You're, put, you're, you're moving up, you're fighting them, suddenly you have a 5 of feeling pain, a 5 up invuln, um, and you're just applying a ton of pressure. You're yep. falling back and charging. Yep. You're coming back to life if you need to. You won't have the characters, but that's really cool. Or you can even just, because a lot of times, like, uh, when you scout stuff is to protect, right? So you mm -hmm. might get screened off, but you kill the screen and now you're in the middle of the table yeah. and then you just, all right, cool. I have my five up feeling of pain. Mm -hmm. Now I loan up. Exactly. And now you can't even interact with me unless you charge oh, me. The loan off. In yeah. which case now I have the funeral pain, right? Ooh, I like that. So and like we're saying, people aren't really used to big blocks right now. Mm -hmm. um, people it's, it's it's more elite stuff. So this is cool. Uh, I will note on the carnivore sheet themselves. I'm I'm curious. I'm curious to hear about your thoughts about this and also chat's thoughts. The carnivores themselves 
One, they did gain a sticky objective holding, which is fantastic. Yep, I love that. Um, so this makes them really fantastic, even just in a, a regular tower. Yeah, game. just a tower you army. You might just take one just for that. Yeah. Um, but they also have the, the a special bodyguard rule, where if you have a big squad of twenty, you can actually attach two characters to them. Mm. I'm so torn on it. You know, like so. So you would take the flesh shaper, right? Yeah. That seems like the one you Definitely want. Definitely want that. But. I don't know. Um, so this trail shaper gives you a redeploy. Yeah. It gives you a runaway when someone gets close, which is interesting, I think. The war shaper gives you the captain ability, so free strat. Let's take a look at the battle tactics in a second. And it gives you the ability to like unbattle shock a unit. I the unbattle shock I think doesn't really matter. Yeah. I don't think I all agree. that much. Um, there are there's only one battle tactic. Oh, but it's a good one. <laughs> and it's the worst one. No. Oh, it is the worst one. Oh, and I'm looking at Retaliation, Kedri. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, yeah. It's the plus one AP. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. For That's sure. That's good. That's actually pretty good. Join the hunt. Oh, join the hunt. Right. Oh. So they can vect it, but you can also do it for free. For free. I think, yeah, that might be the way. Oh, wait, hold on. But hold the on. unit would be dead, though. So no, yeah, that, you can't actually. You can't actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Chad is saying that War Stripe Shaper looks really strong and that you might be able to bring back a unit for free. Um, is it, Does he give it to the. His unit, or does he just get... The problem is he won't be in the unit anymore. One unit from your army with this ability can be targeted, so... Oh. zero CP, even... No. So you can't actually do that, right? What's the ordering? They're in the squad, and the squad dies. Because <laughs> they'll die before him. Well, you have to target him. You know what I'm saying? One unit from your army with this ability can be targeted, and he's the one with the ability, so he's the one that gets targeted. Because as yeah. soon as they die, they're not part of the unit anymore. Yeah, I don't think it works. I don't think it works. Because it says when they're destroyed. It doesn't say right. like right before you remove the last model. Right. It does, you can use it even though it was destroyed. Mm -hmm. But I think they're unattached from them at that point, chat. I, I think they would not be eligible for that. Yeah. Target with this dragon for zero PU. I don't think you can. I think you take the Shaper. Or the, sorry, the Trail Shaper and the Flesh Shaper, right? Yeah. I think the, the Trail Shaper... They don't fall apart until end of activation, says Willow. Oh. Oh. Uh, any phase. So... Sorry. Your face was adorable. So I think it would go to the sequencing of whoever's turn it is, right? Because they would happen at the same time. Because the attacks will be resolved when the unit is destroyed. So if it was my turn, I would say, okay, I resolve my attacks. They're resolved. Now you get to do your thing when you, the thing is destroyed. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. But if you're the attacking player, you're going to choose the order that's, that's bad. Right, exactly. I'd have to look. Because it's the same thing with... Um, uh, like when you shoot at a unit and it can shoot back at you. And you yeah. have like fire and fade or something. Right. You get to choose the order it happens. So I'm going to fire and fade first. Now you can't see me. Go ahead and do your shots. Right. You can't do it. You know what I'm right. saying? So because I'm the active player, I would get to choose the order that the things happen in because they happen at the same time. But they're but they're not your abilities is the difference here. But it doesn't matter. Any abilities that happen at the same time, yeah, the, the, order. the active player chooses the order of the abilities. Okay. So I would say no yeah. because of that reason, but yeah, yeah. I'm happy to be wrong because that would actually be really yeah. powerful and that would be really good for this attachment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. We'll have to take a look. And again, yeah. definitely continue the discussion in chat. And folks. if I'm wrong, please tell me. <laughs> right? Because that would be really, really cool if they could actually do that. I think you definitely take the Flesh Shaper. I think you're right. I'm, I'm, I'm more torn now that we look at it. Let's take a look at the Far Stalkers. I want to talk about them a little bit. Um, I think you, if you're doing the Tau Detachment, you at least take one squad, if not two, because mm -hmm. they're, you know, they have Infiltrate. So they're going to let you get up in the midfield. Um, you can select one unit, start the game to get Lethal or Precision. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, they do get Ignore Cover, which is nice. Which is kind of cool, yeah. So you're probably also putting the Sniper character in this, so that's getting Ignore Cover on top of it. Yep. Um, their weapons are kind of um, poopy. Um, like, this Lundoxy Trivalest is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It's anti-vehicle 4, devastating, what? Oh, it's 1 damage. Yeah, okay. it's... 3 shots, 1 damage. And it's 18 inch range, too, so it's yeah. not even that... Yeah. You have I'm, to get kind of close. I'm taking this, this Flamer equivalent, for sure. It's D6, it's AP1. Yep. That's way better. Um, but again, it's just a unit with 
It's just a cool unit with infiltrators and stealth. And then you could combine this. I'm only torn, like, I think you might do one with the special sniper. But it's also interesting to give them the uh, move when someone gets close. Yeah, that's why I was thinking. That pairs nicely. Because it also gives you redeploy as well. Yeah, exactly. And I think the redeploy is very strong. I'm frankly tempted to take t two squads and put one of each here. And this is after you know who's going first. Ugh. So I, I mean, Trail Shaper, hands down. For me. Oh, now that it's redeploy after you know who's going first, I take that. That's pretty down. good. And then you also could take the Flesh Shaper so you can be more aggressive if you wanted to, if you know that you're going first. Or if you know you're going second, you just redeploy into safety. Oh, man. You know what I mean? so tough. The only problem is you lose infiltrators because the carnivores don't have infiltrate. So you can't you wouldn't start give them, in the middle. Yeah. yeah, you can't start in the middle of the table and then mm. redeploy if you go second or something. It's so interesting. Like, I really like... I was I was uh, shocked to see three crude characters. Characters. Yeah. Four really because of the lone up guy. Oh four, yeah. Sorry, but even just three foot ones. But they actually have offered different things, and I think I'm really excited to kind of play around with the different options. Yeah. Um. So briefly, hounds are improved, which I like. Uh, they can advance and charge if they started within six of crude infantry, mm -hmm. and then if they're within twelve of a crude character, they get OC one, which, which is, is crazy. Huge. It's so good. All those times that you want to just trade your crude in the middle. But you can't, you have to control to cleanse or something. Now you can do it because you can trail out, be within 12 of a character, yep. you have OC. This is awesome. I love this. Um, then for the crew toxes, the rampagers are cool. We were talking a bit about this earlier. Uh, they hit decently hard. They have a lot of attacks. Yeah. They have like, so for a three, so they come in three or six. So for a three man squad, mm -hmm. you get nine attacks at strength four, AP one, one damage with right. Lance. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get 12 attacks at strength 6, AP 1, 2 damage. Oof. And of course, you can stack the extra AP on it if you wanted to. You can go to strength 6, AP 2, 2, or strength 4, AP 2, 1, yep. um, respectively. So I actually think these guys hit relatively rated. well. They also do mortals and battle shock on and the charge. And they have assault weapons. Oh, they have assault, which is So nice. they can advance and do action, action monkeys. That's yep. really cool. Uh, I, 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 I would have given them a 6 of feeling pain, personally. But yeah. that's uh, the way it goes. I will say that every unit, aside from the characters, also has grenades. So oh, the crew locks rampagers. Everything has grenades, obviously, except for the, the crude hounds. They don't have grenades. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, like, the rampagers, they have grenades. That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> like, That's so cool. Yeah, everything has grenades. So <sighs> I love it. You're just forcing damage in other ways, because this mm -hmm. army, or this archetype, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, detachment, is kind of really low AP. AP 1, I think, is the highest. Yeah. Unless you spend the strat. You need this. That's why you need AP the strat, two. like, right. every single turn. Yeah, AP, oh, actually, AP 2 on the lone spear. Oh, for that uh, one for shot. For his shooting, yeah. <laughs> But and outside of that, it's AP 1 or AP 0. Exactly. And to that point, I think that's why you, if you're going to run a crew detachment, I think you need crew tox riders. Mm -hmm. They're your only real shooting uh, profiles. You can choose between the repeater cannon and the tangle cannon. I like that they're actually, uh, it's, it's kind of a tough decision for me. The repeater cannon gives you not high strength, but... Uh, it gives you blast. Oh, sorry, the repeater cannon. Yeah, so yeah. this one gives you AP and strength. Again, we're considering AP, you're probably spending to go to AP 2. Mm -hmm. The Tangle Cannon, I almost wouldn't like it at all if it wasn't for that strat. But because of the strat, getting AP1 on all those shots is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I think the Blast is kind of what sells it for me. If it didn't have Blast and it was just D6 plus 1, yeah. I would. I don't think I would care about it. Exactly. But because it's Blast and you have things that exist like GSE or even now with a Crew mm -hmm. going into like yeah. a Mirror or something. Eldar. Yeah, Eldar or whatever it is, right. Um, so. I think with the extra AP on the strat, it actually is pretty interesting. Yeah. And also... They can hit in melee just as well as the yeah, this rampagers. Is cool. They still get the extra attacks from the fist, so they still have. Uh, well, these guys are actually only squads of one to three. So if you take them yep. to max three, uh, you'll still have the twelve attacks at strength six, AP one, two damage, and then you'll have less attacks at strength four, AP zero, one damage, because uh, the dude on top doesn't hit as hard as the dude right in the other guy. But mm -hmm. uh, it just also gives you more phases to play the game in, which is really important. Really important. So there's the crew. Um, Detachment. I think it's really cool, mm -hmm. really fun. Very thematic, which is Very really thematic. cool. It doesn't feel like, oh, I'm taking this thing because it's thematic and it's not good. Right, yeah, You yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm taking, like, the token crude army because, like, it exists. Exactly. Like, you could actually play this and expect it. Maybe yeah. not, you're not going to win a major. I don't think you're not Yeah, gonna I don't think it's top tier. GTs or whatever, but you'll have a good time and you'll probably, you can win your games. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like... I think someone's going to surprise us with this, Yeah, honestly. for sure. I, so, I, I mean, think we're going to see something... And I'm sure we're wrong in a lot of our estimations as well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We, the, somehow 100%. this will be the detachment to this run. This is first take. We yeah. haven't played with it yet. Yeah. Um, we're going to play with it soon, hopefully. So, that's the four detachments. Mm -hmm. I know that's a lot already. 
Um, <laughs> but I want to go through some of the units uh, and their changes in particular. So, with crisis that, suits, I assume. I know we got to do crisis. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's let's do. Let's see start how in the chat's beginning doing real quick. quick. Yeah, let's see how chat's doing. Chat's doing great. Um, they seventy six percent believe that Monka wins over Monkai versus Kayong. Oh, so, interesting. Mm. Okay, I think okay. we'll have to try out that. that yeah, we should. At some point. No more questions yet. Cool. Feel free to shoot the questions over. There's no minimum today. Or we're just going to answer any questions you guys have. So, where are we starting? I think let's just start from the top, but we'll go quick through, through stuff. Uh, Shadow Sun, Farsight, still great. I'm sure there's changes that I, that I will miss, so feel free to let us know. But as far as I know, these are the same. Uh, Anva, Anshi, Long Strike, all gone, all out of the book, all um, resin. So, I'm not surprised. Good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's probably for the best, honestly. Um, the commanders are similar. The loadouts have changed slightly, so you can only take one cyclic. You can double up on other things, um, including shield drones here, so you can still get the extra wounds. You can get uh, double flamers, for example. You just can't get a bunch of cyclics. So, again, it just kind of matches the, um, the kit. Farsight gets extra, uh, free strats now. Oh, he does get free strats. Farsight, uh, yep. So that is CP. here. Yep. Pure Tithe Teachings, zero CP, uh, which is cool. I like it. Well, as a surprise, Adrian didn't play him today, and now I understand why. Because I thought he was the same? Yep. <laughs> Honestly, the reason I didn't play him today was because I wanted the ethereal. Mm. I wanted the CP to do the cool tricks, yeah. and it was important. Yeah, it was very, very important. Yeah. But we will play him, for sure. Um... Fireblades going to be as important as ever. We're giving those extra shots to your uh, breachers, which again are still going to be very important. If you are down on crisis suits, may I, may I suggest breachers? They're fantastic. Uh, ethereals, again, CP super important. So if you're not taking Farsight, uh, Ethereal, I highly, highly recommend. Dark Strider is still fantastic. Denies uh, reinforcements within 12 and gives mm -hmm. plus one to wound for this squad. Uh, again, breachers. <laughs> uh, strikes and breachers. Uh, you can see uh, this one, these I think are exactly the same. Um, yep, looks the same. Do you want to push the book down a little bit? Sorry, yeah. Angle. I'm just going to lay it flat for now. And we come to the crisis suits. All right, folks. Right, before we, we jump into this. Yes. The names of these things. The names are wrong, first of all. They are so silly. Why? The missile and plasma unit is the fire knife. Not the one with the flamethrowers, not the ones with the fusions. That's the fire knife? Are you kidding me? That's my complaint. I, I just don't... Why? I don't understand. Why? Like, I get they wanted different data sheets for all this yeah. stuff. What would you call them? I don't know. Flamer crisis? Yeah, sure, whatever. Super hot crisis. I don't know. Super like, hot would be pretty good, actually. The Sunforge. Sunforge and Starsight and what's Fire the, Knife. What's the name of those chips? Sun chips? Sun chip, Sun chip battle suits? Yeah. That'd be cool. Well, that's what they are now. <laughs> <laughs> Sun chip. Sunforge, Fire Knife, Starsight. All cost different points. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's fine. I think they should, right? They should. That's, uh, why they, that's why they can separate them out, right? Yep. So let's dive into it. Yep. These are more like, um, they got the, the land speeder treatment, right? Where they're good against certain targets. Mm -hmm. So the Sun Forge only take fusion. It's two per now. Um, and I'll lift this up again. Uh, you notice, of course, you can take up to two drones each, but you cannot take duplicates. So a shield drone up to for five wounds, I think that's important. Um, and then uh, you can take a gun drone or a marker drone. You just need one marker drone in the squad to, to give them the marker drone benefit. So you could probably take one of those and the rest take gun drones. Mm -hmm. Gun drones do give you assault. Yes. Um, so that's important. So really, really minimum nice. take one. Yeah. Uh, and it's just more shots. So chat's saying the names from the loadouts are from the 4th edition White Dwarf article. That doesn't make them good, chat. Look, we're in 10th edition now. That was <laughs> many, many moons ago. <laughs> I like the Sun Chip battle suits, though. That's yeah. a cool name. Uh, this one gets uh, reroll uh, wounds and damage against vehicles and monsters. So that's important. Kind of have traditionally suffered against high toughness. Mm -hmm. So that's important. And... For some reason, these, these guys get a 4 plus 7 vulnerable save. save. Yeah, they're the only ones. Yeah, fun fact, they're not the most expensive units either. The Sunforge. Trying not to show my codes, so you guys can steal it. <laughs> fun fact, that doesn't work until anyone everyone can buy it. So we literally can't the even last use it. Page. So the Sunforge. Don't look at the code. Sunforge, where's the Sunforge? Huh? Huh? 
I'm gonna dox my code. Sunforge is 160 for three. 160 for three. And this, then the yeah. Star Scythe is 140, and then the Fire Knife is 165. So the Fire Knife is actually the most expensive. And it's the worst one. And it's the worst one. <laughs> um, the the fusions I rate highly. They're tough. They mm -hmm. have a good ability that matches their their thing, and um, they cost about as much as an Eradicator. And but they're like faster and almost as killy. So I'm here for it. And they're tougher. Fire knife, uh, it's a combination of two weapons. You can have missile pod, plasma, one of each, double. Um, and then their ability is reroll ones to hit, or if you're going at a unit that has that starting strength. You can reroll hits instead. It's just like, what the heck? I don't like this one. This one feels like buttons. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm not even trying to. The star scythe is in the air, up in the air for me, but I'm interested. So you can take <laughs> any combination of two burst cannon or tau flamers, uh, and then if you're shooting at non-monster, non-vehicle, you get plus one AP, uh, which makes sense. You don't want them to be good at killing big things. AP is for clearing, like, you know, infantry. So I like it. The fact you only get two guns makes me a little bit nervous. Yeah, I'm a little apprehensive on it. Yeah. Uh, they can fall back and shoot, though, which is really nice. Yep, they do uh, like this. And the extra AP on their guns, too. So it makes burst cannons actually not... The worst thing, like the flamers, obviously as well, because especially yeah, if you take them in the retaliation category, mm -hmm. then they get the extra AP from that as well. Yep, and extra strength. Too. Yep. If you go into five and six, both yep. good inflection points. Yeah, the strength six more so I think than the strength five. Yeah, All right, just because then you now T three on twos. Yeah, well you would worry about that. Yeah, this, I'm... this is good against space marines, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't care about space marines. <laughs> I know, because <laughs> they have armor contempt, so your AP one doesn't actually matter. That's that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the burst cannons, especially because you have the longer range as well. Um, but then you have the defect, the three inches, so it the depends. 12 inch range isn't the worst thing either. Yeah. So I, mean, I don't know, this is, again, like you said, it's a toss-up, right? And it'd be good in different detachments, mm -hmm. right? I think if you're going carry on, then obviously burst is nice because you can trigger the sustained, mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily need to be up close. Um, but I like that this is, at least now, in the early days, there's not a for sure right answer, yep. you know, until Large War figures it out for us. <laughs> So there we are. No, we don't have to think about anything. And we don't have to think. We can just. And we're back, back to, to the it. days of just taking the most effective. Ones. I know. <laughs> uh, stealth suits, big upgrade. Uh, when they are the observer, they give re rolls of hit, re -roll hit rolls of one and re roll wound rolls of one. Amazing. I'm very very curious to see what happens with the tetras. I don't think they really changed any units in the Necron book when they released the Codex. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Tetras just they've been such an auto take and it's awkward because they're a forge rolled unit. Yeah. Right. I feel like this gives you a reason to not take them. Yes. Uh, which is nice because if you don't have them or you don't want to invest in like the mm -hmm. forge stuff, because I mean the writing's on the wall. A lot of the forge stuff has been like yeah. moved on from. Yeah. Um, so still, the battle suits give you a good alternative to it. Yep. Which exactly. is nice. Uh, ghost kills are great. They seem the same. Pathfinders. These are units I haven't actually really played in tenth, so um, I won't say what's changed. I'll just say what they do. They have guns. They are they good guns? at spotting. What? They have guns. <laughs> They're crazy. You know, they do scout. You like that? And they can uh, they can spot for they can spot twice in a turn. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that's that's definitely cute. Uh, far side team still seems bad. Um, they get to reroll all hits when they're the guided unit. <laughs> cool, cool. And it's what it's yeah. It's, yeah, I, they have precision. Yeah, with one gun, three shots, three, three shots. Three shots. Rerolling hits. That's not the worst thing. It's okay. It's, it's also heavy, so you can hit on threes. Yeah, if you don't move. Just don't move. If someone stands their characters in front of you, you will get reroll hits with your AP1 guns. I'll die on this hill. I'm into it. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see. We can... We can... Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's bad, I'm kidding. Do they have marker light? They do have marker light. So this was the reason that I've taken these in the past, not for their own shooting. It's just because they're a marker light, and they are a lone operative. So I think they're not terrible. It has nothing to do with their output. Their output is great. Yeah, wow. Okay. Well, you can play these when we play our Tower oh, versus yeah? Tower oh, matchup. Well, no, I get to play the Crew when we do Tower versus Tower. The Crew? Oh, yeah. I don't know if you want to be on that side of I it. I want to be on that side of it. Ugh. And then uh, Vespid, we were talking about it before. They... Uppy Downy. Uppy Downy. Which is cool. I like it. I don't know how much they cost, but uh, conceptually, this is great. You don't see them a lot, right? Yeah. So probably too much. But even then, like, what is too much for Uppy Downy? Yeah. Let's look. So those points will probably not be accurate. Well, let's see what they have them. Um, they have them at 70 points for five. And at that, I mean, I take that. 70, 70 points, points for, for five. five for Uppy Downy. Oh, I that's take good. That. Yeah, it's really good. Because also look at their guns. It's two shots, strength five, AP two for two. And their assault. 
Yeah, I take that. They've always been 100%. good for those reasons. So they must have Despot. gone up. Because otherwise, well, I don't know why people wouldn't take them. Those sound, that sounds amazing. Though, that's to be fair, I haven't played a ton of t against a ton of Tau this edition. Okay. I've played no, them a handful fair. of times. Um, Vespid. V E S P I D. No. Vespid. They're 65 points now. I think you take three of these. Three? The up and downy on three yeah. units. It's amazing. They're Especially like, if you're not taking um, retaliation where you have up and downy naturally. Yeah. Then you definitely take three of these, right? Because it just gives mm. you the flexibility. I need to print out some best fit. Yeah. 65 so. points. Really so good. Cheap. That's so cheap. Wow. For what they do, they deep strike too. Yeah. Like it's up and downy with deep strike. They don't shoot as well as Mandrakes, but they. Sh Sorry, they're not as durable as Mandrakes, but they, but shoot, they shoot harder. Yeah. I mean, strength fighter is two for two. And they're T4. And they're what full. about the timing of their upbeat downy? Is that a problem? Uh, at the end of your movement phase, if this unit is not with. Ah. Oh. 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 Okay. That's why. But you can do that turn one still, though. Oh, but then they're going to strategic reserve. It's not. It's yeah, not they don't come, come back, back next turn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. I'm, I'm over it. You're I over get it. it. Ah, pass. Don't take any of them. I get it. <laughs> take zero. <laughs> they're okay, but it's kind of what we were saying earlier is there's other things that probably push them out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all the crew units, we talked about those. Super excited. Uh, piranhas look unchanged, but they're still fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I really like them. Um, broadsides, I need to get into broadsides because good tile players, competitive tile players are still taking them. Um, they ignore modifiers. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. No, they're, they're good, so I'm told. They have four up against mortals. They're just That's slow, so they're kind of strange. slow for me to use, but... Yeah. yeah. I think with five, ah, it sucks. They don't yeah. fly, do they? No, exactly. of course not. Although, if you're a uh, Monkai, you can assault with them. Yeah. No, they are good. They are, they are factually good. I am not a Tau expert. T good Tau players are winning with them. Riptides are fantastic. They're great. Yeah, Riptides For, for are the points. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's any other changes here, chat. Let us know. I don't know any of the vehicles to know whether or not. Yeah, we're kind of in the realm of units I haven't really played in. Sun Shark Bomber. I don't think I've ever seen a Sun Shark. No, that's not true. They were good for a minute. I definitely saw them. The last edition, people were running like Because the, the Razor Shark makes the Sun Shark, right? It's the same kit? It's the same, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the bomb was pretty good last edition. Um, two years ago. <laughs> can we talk about the shield line? You can talk about the shield line. I don't know anything about it. It's a you wall can take a, that moves. A fort, it you moves? stand on it. Wait, what? They traditionally move very slowly. What? Uh, well, it's minus one to hit if you're in it. Um, don't you don't need to take a desperate escape test. You just move when yeah. you fall back. Oh, yeah, moves four. Uh, moves four. <laughs> I'm taking three of these for my crew. <laughs> we have a bunch of, so if you want to build them, I'm taking three of these them. for the crew. For the crew. For the, I get cover all the time. <laughs> and it's cool, minus actually. one to hit, and then they get the funeral thing. <laughs> and they have an info. That's the most uncrewed thing I've ever seen. I'm taking... We brought our walls, let's go. Firing um, deck 20. <laughs> <laughs> I love really this. funny. I'm going to move. They're super long. They can probably stand on multiple objectives. Can you guide them. these? Probably. <laughs> That's really weird. Yeah, but... you could. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, do you add attachments to these? Um, the Tidewall, Gun Rig, and the Drum I forgot how it works in 10th edition. Uh, I think they're separate vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking all of them. It's a really cool concept. <laughs> I just get a it's moving really fortification. A game. <laughs> I'm taking it for the crew, 100%. <laughs> I'm here for it. Well, that is the book. Again, it's kind of a first glimpse. We have had, obviously, a few days to go over it, talk about it. There is a video that's kind of a shorter version that's just about the detachments. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we can kind of take some final questions and we'll give some final thoughts. Um, how is chat doing? Chat is great. We have one more question so far. Yeah. Thank you, Overboard. Which detachment do you see the tanks in and which ones are hot? Ooh, yeah, we need to do a hotter grot. Tanks, 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 Ooh, tanks. tanks. Um, that's tough. What are uh, benefiting I don't from? see the retaliation cadre taking tanks mm, too much. No. Uh, because they want to be close and tanks yeah. theoretically don't want to be close. So at that point, I probably would say the Kalyan. Yeah. I think, I think Kalyan is probably where you'd see tanks most. Yeah. Um, I could also see an argument for Mont Ka, probably less so, because the lethal is less important, I think, than the sustain. Yeah. Assault the, is cool. Because you yeah, can be true. fast. That is true. But I think sustained is better. Mm -hmm. And I think in that matchup, we talked about stealths. I think you're really wanting to take Tetras there. Because your tanks are 
generally le less volume of shots, mm -hmm. which is a little bit scary when trying to roll sixes. So you want to get as many rerolls as you can. Yeah. Um, but like sustained or double sustained late game, as I'm sure you know, overboard if you play Tau, um, that gets really really scary. Yeah, it does. When it's railgun shots that are getting sustained too. Sustained too. It's pretty cool. That's brutal. Yeah, it's probably Monk. Oh, sorry, probably Kayon. Kayon, I think. Yeah. Uh, and which ones are hot? Retaliation Cadre. Retaliation sure. Cadre. I sure. don't think the other ones are bad. I think. I just think they're not. I don't know. They're just not good. like. I don't want to say it's good because there probably is a good build within these, but you probably have to like dive deep into the cuts, you know. I think they're all good. You know. They're playable. All of them are playable like, for sure. Monk, like auto advance six inches plus one AP. It's giving scout. Nothing stands out as like a pooper. You know? No. They're all like, yeah. reasonable. I'm happy and they're all they're all interesting and they're all kind of different, mm -hmm. which is really exciting. I like the crew one for sure though. Right. As most people probably do. Yeah. It's funny because the crew one is probably like the worst attachment. Oh, for sure. It's the one everyone's the most excited about. Yeah. Oh, I will say also, we do mention this in the attachment video, the crew attachment, you can take non-crew units. Mm -hmm. So if you want to shore up those weaknesses, you can take some broadside, some anti-tank. Some hammerheads or whatever. Some hammerheads, yeah. ethereal, so you can do more crew Extra strats. CP, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that, that's definitely an option if you're not like locked into doing crew. So, or if you're just collecting your crew collection and you don't have the, the full 2,000 points. You're building it, yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Overboard. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Overboard. Uh, Terry G's coming in to ruin your dreams, Brian. Sorry, Brian. No crew or Vespid in the ties, Tide Walls. Ah, uh, okay. So All that right. was, yeah. I'm over it now. I don't want to play Tower ever again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And we then, had him for a second, folks. And then JW wanted to point out that uh, the Sky Rays get twin-linked now. The oh, they got twin-linked. Twin Ooh. That's pretty spicy. That's, that's pretty spicy. That's really spicy, actually. Sky Rays. Yes. Those are the ones. That, oh, they used to do mortals, right? They would just like fire off a rocket and do mortals. They've done a lot of different things in different different versions. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a triple yeah. seeker missile. Six plus one, it's three shots. Against fly, you reroll the hit roll. When you, I mean, you, there's other ways to get the rerolls anyways. Yeah, and Even you, you get really a single play. hit in, or wound roll, reroll. Well, it's twin link, so you would reroll. I guess the you could do it for the other guns, but. Yeah, we could do it for the hit, right? Because right? it's, oh, it's or. hit or, I see. Yeah, no, this, not Eldar, please. Sorry, sorry. Please. <laughs> that's cool, because that's such a cool unit. Mm-hmm. Huh. It is big damage too. It's D6 plus one. Yeah. The twin link is actually really, really fun. I'm into it. This is awesome. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Well, uh, hopefully this be, this has been fun, informative, entertaining, if nothing else. We're really excited for this book. Mm -hmm. So again, reminder, tomorrow we're going to play some Old World 6 p.m. Pacific Standard. Uh, Tuesday evening we're going to be playing uh, a members game of Tau. Usually the vote's determined pretty early on, so I can actually just pull this up and see. Um, what might we be playing? Premium voting. In the lead currently is more retaliation cadre. Oh. If you feel differently, go vote. Because it's not out of it's not out of reach How yet. How close is it? So Ooh. it's in the lead. It's it's close. I'll tell you what, we're probably not playing Cal Yacht on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> um, but definitely join us for that. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Um and that really appreciate all the love and support. We'll catch y'all next time on the tabletop. Bye. Bye.